Hey, it's Rav. Welcome to Everyday Investor TV show, the hottest investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. This show is designed to help us all grow our money. You see, the challenge can often be that we take our precious time, we go to work, we get a paycheck in order to eat. We take our time, we go to work, we make money so that we can provide. But imagine a world where money could make you money, where you could have a little bit more time for the things that matter most in your life, such as spending it with family, friends, engaging in a purpose greater than yourself. Remember, whenever you're faced with any investment opportunity, you always want to ask four questions to start. Number one, what is the return on my investment? Number two, when do I get that return along with the money that I put in? Three, what is the minimum investment amount needed? And four, what is the risk, the worst case scenario? Super excited about today's show. We are going to be talking about how we can Wait for it, we'll be right back. Coming up, we're talking to veteran investor Dave Dupuy on how we can make money with no money down. Well, that one, yeah, we've always kind of got it. This one, this is why I don't like using my own money. I'll, I'll utilize, you know, if I need 40K, I'll do a fix or flip, or I'll use my line of credit because I know I'll get it back on the refinance. So this is why I really like going into the deal with none of my own money. The mortgage world has changed. Has your advice? Are you looking for a modern approach to your mortgage planning process? Advice tailored to your unique, ever-changing circumstances? Whether you're upsizing, downsizing, purchasing, or refinancing, the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team works with individuals and companies to custom tailor the right mortgage product for you. Working with a wide selection of lenders, we're here to serve our clients and help them achieve their real estate and retirement goals. Contact the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team today. Canada's mortgage choice. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. Super excited to be talking to Dave about how we can make money with no money down, investing in multifamily properties. Before we do that, let's find out what's going on in the world of stocks with Omar Khan. Thanks, Rav. Omar Khan here, guys, with Data Trading. Just want to let you know what's going on in the market. The TSX is doing really, really well. The S&P 500, largest stock market in the U.S., that's doing pretty well. Uh, and the NASDAQ, the tech heavy index. Now, that's not doing quite as well. Why? is because of the 10-year treasury yield. Now, that's gone up to 1.7%. Now, what that means is, in simple terms, this. People are investing more in the bond market because they're getting a higher rate of return. They're pulling a lot of that money out of the tech names. Also, a lot of the tech names are, are, are having money pulled out of them and into traditional names, you know, your banking, your, your oil and gas companies, that type of thing. So that's what's happening in the market right now. You're seeing a repricing of assets because of a higher interest rate on the 10-year bond. Now, we're going to keep track of this because the concern is that if it keeps going higher and inflation creeps in, then the central banks around the world in Canada and the United States, they would have to raise interest rates sooner than anticipated. We don't think that's going to happen, but and Jerome Powell in the United States, the Federal Reserve Chairman, said that it hasn't going to happen, but that's what we're going to watch out for. Our interest rates going to go up. Now, for all you real estate investors, that's also going to be important. Anyways... We'll keep a track of that so far, so good. But in the end of the day, what does power the stock market and, and, and stocks in general are quality corporate earnings, and those are still intact. But we will keep an eye on inflation. Back to you, Rob, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, Omar. Always great to hear from you. Chat next week. Dave Dupuy, how are you, my friend? Hey, Rob, I'm awesome, man. Thank you so much for having me. Now, do I say that right with the right uh, inflection? Dupuy, is that uh, French? You're saying it very, very well. Yes, it's French Canadian. Usually I get Dupree. They add an R in there, but you did not add the R, so I appreciate it. <laughs> nice, nice. Listen, uh, you know, back in the day in uh, when uh, Jesus was around and there was a party, he uh, brought out the best wine first. I mean, most people, they bring out the, you know, the wine that's not that great, uh, but he brought out the, uh, the best wine first. And uh, that's why we had your wife on the show uh, before you. Uh, I'm just kidding, Dave. It was great. I actually, well, I'd love to have both of you um, yeah. on, on the screen. Um, you know, and I actually think I said that wrong. He actually did bring out the best wine first. And then when they got drunk, he bring in the, the, the stuff that didn't taste so good. I would love for you and your better half to be on together. Yes, um, I agree. Because, yeah, the investor MelDave.com team uh, is a phenomenal team. Uh, we've never actually met, but I feel like I know you from your uh, 
uh, social media profile from all your teachings. Uh, it's really, really great stuff. And I know you're busy and with the kids and all that kind of stuff. So thanks for uh, doing this with me and uh, really look forward to learning. You guys really specialize. I mean, you have what? Over 200, uh, you know, uh, doors now, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. 200 doors and, um, you know, in other words, tenants. Uh, but that doesn't mean you have two, over 200 properties. How many dwellings is that? 30, 33 dwellings, yes, and about 216 apartments. That's amazing. And, yeah. and the re reason what's even more amazing is you're doing this predominantly, if not exclusively, with none of your own money. Correct. Yeah, our, our, uh, our buying strategy is OPM all the way. OPM, other people's money. Yep. And there's no way you could be doing this in a small little you know, community, you must be downtown Toronto or downtown Vancouver doing this, yes? No, about three, three and a half hours from, uh, from Toronto and about four hours, let's say, from Ottawa in uh, North Bay, Ontario. And, and what's the population there? 52,000. Dave, this is amazing. So you've got 52,000 and you are, 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 you know, crushing it as a, a real estate investor and you know, I don't know if we have time to go deep into the story, um, but, you know, there was a wake up call that uh, that happened. Talk a little bit about, uh, you know, briefly when that happened and what was the impetus for you to say, hey, we we got to really consider how we can um, preserve our time for the things that matter most. In this case, your family. Ta tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, 2018, Mel and I had a terrible highway accident uh, just outside of Wonderland. So that's Vaughan, Ontario, Canada, if you're wondering. Uh, just a wake-up call, right? We were doing real estate. I think we owned about 18 properties at that time. I think it was 70 or 80 units, let's say. Uh, and we, 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 you know, we were doing it, but we weren't full-time real estate investors. Mel was still at uh, the college teaching. I was still a firefighter. And after that, Mel never went back another day to work. And I, I retired shortly after too. So uh, that's what, you know, we were on the fence. We were already doing it, but that was the definitely the nudge. Almost dying was definitely the nudge to let's do this full time and retired from our jobs in our 30s. And now we're doing what we love every day. How, what, what are the kids? How, how old are the kids now? 15, 12, and uh, six. 15, 12, and six. And God makes us all different. Uh, do they, are they going down this journey with you? Can you see one of them, two of them, all three of them or no? I don't know. I, I know they don't want a boss. That's for that. They kind of say that they, so I'm like, well, you're gonna have to pick something. Either you're going to be an entrepreneur or you're gonna have to work for someone at some point. But, uh, I think they like the freedom that we have with real estate, sorry, with, uh, the time freedom in that and kind of working around our own schedule. Um, but I don't think they've gotten the bitten by the bug of real estate. I think they, they want to have some sort of business, but I don't know if it'll be real estate. So we'll see. It'll be interesting. It's all good. I mean, they don't want a boss. They've already got uh, Daddy Dave there. So exactly. uh, he's, he's boss enough. Well, if they can uh, deal with me, they can deal with any boss. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> so listen, when we were talking before, we said, hey, let's call this show Making Money, Investing with No Money Down. So, you know, normally... That would be some uh, some guy on TV with his boat and some you know so-called perceived pretty girls uh, behind him and hey you can do this with no money down and you know there's no really no such thing but then there absolutely is such a thing uh, talk to us about what that means how do we get into this world with no money down and what are the different ways it's not even just one vehicle you have many different ways um, that you're doing this I mean when your wife was on the show several months ago here we are in the you know spring of 2021 uh, but when your wife was on the show uh, she did what's called even a, a seller take back where you know uh, some woman at some farm kind of, i can't really remember all the details but she was giving the mortgage to you guys so talk about a, a little bit about the four five six ways three ways that you guys like to um, execute investing in real estate with no money down specifically in the example of the first mortgage uh rav if they're going to hold that first mortgage um, it's the same thing like a bank. So they're basically going to be the bank. They're going to turn their equity into a mortgage. So you would negotiate that. You would put paper to pen, either using a realtor, if you're doing it specifically lawyer to lawyer, you would negotiate the terms, the interest rate, you know, is it a five-year term? Is it a two-year term? The interest rate, is it going to be interest only? Is it going to be principal and interest? Then you're going to uh, discuss the amortization. Are you going to have a 25-year amortization? Because it's creative financing. 
they can decide to do a 40 year amortization as long as you and the seller agree. And once you've kind of come to, to terms with what the deal is going to look like, then you bring it to the lawyers and, and then they'll draft it up, right? So think about it when you buy a, a building or a house through the banks, they fund the lawyer. So they actually send the money to the lawyer and then the lawyer will be the one that actually uh, does the first charge mortgage. So same thing like the bank, they'll just do it with, let's say, grandma and grandma in that example. They'll, they'll actually... Um, they'll put the first charge mortgage on the property. And instead of saying, you know, RBC, CIBC, TD Canada Trust, it'll say, you know, mom and pop type thing, where whatever their names are. And then they now are the bank. So this property, there's something I want to do. There's some kind of like farmland, but I know I can get it zoned. I want to sever it. I want to do this and that. The property, I go to a knock on the door. I'm going to give you a million dollars for this property, but here's what I want you to do. I'll give you 200,000 cash. And then the other 800,000, I'm going to give you monthly payments. And this is a five-year term. And after five year, ter- years, I'll give you the rest. And the reason why grandma, grandpa might do that is because, well, many reasons, but one is I'll give you a premium. I'll give you some cash flow. I'll give you, so, okay. So that's how it works. Now, in that example, Dave, now, where do we get the other 200,000? Because we're going to give 200,000 to them. They're going to let us pay that other 800,000 monthly over a five-year term and then um you know later we'll just pay them fully out but where do i get the other 200 from yeah absolutely so that example where the seller's holding the first mortgage uh there's other there's other yeah there's other tools that you could utilize right so you could utilize secured funds for example so secured funds means rsps uh tfsas here in canada 401k roth iras in the states and those you can utilize as a second mortgage which would be your down payment in the form of a mortgage uh, so that we've done the building i'm in actually my down payment actually came from from that type from a secured from from a lady's rsps the next one is uh, i love this one promissory notes and contractual agreements this is my favorite one because you can utilize you can get a certain pool of money and then utilize it for different projects so in this case you need 200k so you would approach different investors uh, who have liquidity have cash it can't be secured funds for this and you would ask them to lend it to you you would say hey uh, For this example, Rav, I'm using 200K as my down payment and my downstroke into this piece of land. And my my plan is to pay you back after X amount of uh, of years. And this is going to be the interest we paid. And you negotiate that as well. Uh, The other, the third one we do, same thing. Let's say, Rav, you have cash. You're the investor. You have cash. And you say, Dave, I don't want to do a promissory note. Then we could take your cash and put it as a mortgage for the second, for this down payment, for the second. uh, Yeah, sorry for your down payment. Just make a second mortgage. So, if the, you want so the difference security. is, so, okay, so I like it. So we're going to buy uh, grandma and, and grandma's, grandma and grandpa's property. We're going to give them more than they would get if they put it on the market. Um, we're, whatever, we're going to make it attractive for them, $800,000. They're holding that. We just pay them monthly. You need two hundred grand to give to them. Um, you go to Rav. Rav knows you, trusts you, likes you, and it's a promissory note, um, and it's an attractive one, and it can be double-digit returns. Um, or... Rav still likes you, trusts you, but I want to put a lien on that property. And so it might be a little less. It might be eight, nine percent, whatever the case is. But I still give you the two hundred thousand and we're giving that to grandma, grandpa. And so why Dave and Mel do that is because they're paying out, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, 8, 9 percent. But you're making 50, 60, 70, 80 percent annualized returns. In your case, you like to refinance. I mean, they're, they're, they're infinite returns. So, okay, so that's how you're doing it. And because you have such a great track record, I'm sure people are, um, you know, coming to you and saying, hey, Dave, Mel, can I make 8 to 12% or whatever the case is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and with the sellers, again, it's not necessarily like we give them an attractive price, but it's also the tax advantages that they get. Uh, why they want to sell to us. They're going to have tax advantages. They're going to pay less tax. They're going to make interest. Right now, mom and pop now have a mortgage and they're making points on their on their money now every month. So there's just so many reasons why seller financing and creative financing works. And then Rav, if you did the, the second mortgage with me, you're making interest on your money, right? You want to invest in real estate, but you're, you want to be passive and you, ha- you find someone like me, Dave, you take care of the toilets, the tenants. Every month you pay me you know, an amount. And you're investing in real estate, but but doing it from, from the comfort of your home. So it's a win-win for a lot of people. Love it. Dave, thanks so much. Uh, let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll uh, do some uh, some numbers here. 
and uh, teach us how we make money with no money down. I'm talking to my friend Dave Dupuy, and uh, he is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to real estate investing. Don't go anywhere. We'll look at the numbers when we come back. At Theta Training, our goal is to help you achieve financial freedom by teaching you the foundations of trading stock options. Join our growing community. Learn through our live streamed weekend course or develop your skills at your own pace online. Understand how the stock market works and how you can use the options market to earn additional income, achieve financial freedom, and live life on your terms. Let us help you build your empire. Hey, it's Rob. Welcome back to Everyday Investor. I'm talking to my friend Dave. He's teaching us how we make money with no money down. Uh, before we do that, let's find out what's happening in the world of mortgages with Kyle Ford. Thanks, Rob. It's everybody's favorite time of the year. It's tax season. This week, I want to talk about self-employed mortgage financing as it relates to your taxes. First of all, one very important thing that lenders are going to want to see is that all of your taxes are paid up to date. If you have outstanding balances on your HSD or personal taxes, the lenders are going to, all, in almost all cases, want to see that that's paid in advance, paid in advance of funding, so before you get your mortgage money. Secondly, it's around income showed. The name of the game for a lot of self-employed people was get that income as low as possible to pay the least amount of taxes. The challenge becomes qualifying for mortgage financing becomes very difficult. Work with your accountant and your mortgage broker to talk about what your long-term strategy is going to be. Is it to buy a lot of properties? Your business may need to start paying you a higher salary personally so you can qualify for more properties. As I mentioned, work with your accountant and mortgage broker to really dive into the strategy and make sure you have a well-rounded plan to meet your long-term goals. As always, I'm always available to help. And thanks, and back to you, Rob. Thanks, uh, Kyle. Look forward to hearing from you next week. Dave Dupuy. Uh, you know, I was telling uh, my daughter, because she wouldn't remember or know about, uh, we had a skunk in our backyard. And uh, remember that uh, Pepe Le Pew? <laughs> yeah. Pepe Le Pew, there was a black cat, but it happened to have a white, uh, a white mark on its back. And then so the skunk wanted to fall in love with... Uh, Dave, I don't want to talk real estate. I just want to reminisce here. There you go. I'm in. I'm turning 50 this year, and I'm, I'm uh, happy and sad. Oh, you but, look good, man. Yes. I mean, you wouldn't understand. You're what, 32, 33? 34. 34. <laughs> um, listen, uh, teach us uh, how we make money with no money down with a live example. So what am I doing here? Okay, so this is an example. I, I've worked with the seller for two years here to get this deal. Um, so this deal is in North Bay. It has eight residential units and it has three commercial units. So it's a mixed, it's a mixed use building. Um, so how, let's many, get how many residential? Eight residential units. Eight res and? Three commercial tenants. And why did you say two years? What does that mean? Oh, I just back and forth with the sellers, right? To kind of go and, and get this, uh, this deal done. Uh, I just don't want people to think it happens. Like sometimes you got to nurture deals. You got to kind of get talk to people, right? And they might not. Two years ago was not the time for them, but now they decided I'm ready to rock and roll. So I just don't want people thinking they can find perfect deals in an instant. It, sometimes you got to you got to keep looking, right? That's great, and that's probably why you're you're going wide, and then different ones come in when they come in. Yeah, exactly. I'm not forcing it. Yeah. No, I love it. Okay, so that so we bought something in North Bay, eight residential, three commercial. Uh, units and uh, what was the price on that? This one was six hundred thousand dollars. Six hundred k. Okay, so how do we make money? So you know, obviously, we're not going to call this show "How to Make Money with No Money Down." If Dave took six hundred k out of his bank account, so what do we do? So I got a first charge mortgage from through my mortgage broker through a MIC, a mortgage. What does it stand for? Mortgage Investment Mortgage Investment Corporation. Corp, Just yeah. a bunch of people. A bunch of people came together and gave you a mortgage. For how much? They gave me 70% loan to value. So we'll just say lender. And do you want me to put the 70%, like 420,000 or just put 70%? It's up to you. It's up to you, uh, Rav, whatever you think will be. 70%. So they gave you 420K. Yeah, correct. Sorry, I should have given you the number. Yeah, 420K. Okay. And, and then, then there's no money down. So we need another what? 180 from somewhere? 
Correct. The downstroke, the down payment was 130,000, which would be a uh, well, 30% loan to value. Um, so the $180,000 came yes. from, sorry, $180,000 came from like we were talking earlier, promissory notes. Okay. Uh, so seller, somebody, somebody yeah. like Rav, yep. the investor, he gave you the 180 promissory note, meaning we don't secure it on title. I know Dave, I see the history. I'm not bugging you. I'm not calling you every day. Um, and for that, you give me a nice premium return or I, I do, you know, put a lien on there. Either way, Rav's lending the money, making eight to 12, 13%, whatever we discuss. Um, but that's how you did it. So a bunch of guys, um, a Mick in a Mick gave you the lion's share. And then Rav, one investor gave you 180K either with a promissory note or with a conventional lending. Yeah, bang on, exactly. The seller wanted no part of financing in this one, so I had to get uh, to go somewhere else. Okay, great. Now what? Okay, now what? So he actually gave me this. They lent me 200. So 180 I used towards the down payment, uh, Rav. Okay. My closing costs were $13,000, which I, the $20,000 remaining from the 200, yeah. I used uh, 13 of that towards the closing costs. So closing costs with land transfer and uh, you know lawyers and all that stuff came up to $13,000. Yep. And, uh, and then, yeah, you so went to, then you and the wife went to Cancun for a week with the other 7,000 <laughs> before you got started? No, no, actually we put that to work. We, we ended up, so this, t the eight units, I actually had a drug dealer in one, which I knew, I think that's why the price was so attractive is we had a drug, uh, well, someone who was just not a good tenant, right? So I knew obstacle from day one was I had a tenant that was affecting the entire building. So we got, we were able to get her out. Um, and then we other, when I bought the building, two units had given notice. I was able to get her out and someone else gave notice a couple months after. So I was actually able to uh, renovate and repair four units already out of the eight residential units. But um, not with the, not with the 7,000. No, 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 no. It came up to about, let's say, $50,000 total. It wasn't, it wasn't major work. The, the drug dealer one, yes, but the other ones, maybe a paint job, maybe a countertop, a little bit of flooring, nothing demolition here, uh, uh, Rav, just kind of cosmetic and, and, and that type of thing. And so where did you get that 50,000? I mean, the 43,000, if you will, where did you get that from? Just another promissory note lender kind of thing? Well, that one, yeah, we've always kind of got it. This one, this is why I don't like using my own money. I'll, I'll utilize, you know, if I need 40K, I'll do a fix or flip, or I'll use my line of credit because I know I'll get it back on the refinance. So this is why I really like going into the deal with none of my own money. So if I need to fund a flip with my own money, yeah. I'll use my line of credit. So let's say in this one, I use my, my line of credit for the, the 50 minus the seven, the 43. Okay. So we're paying interest on the line of credit, which is nothing today. We're paying interest um, to RAV, again, 8 to 12%. And uh, we're paying the MIC, which is usually lower. That's a 6 7% or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, this one was, I think it was 8.5 interest-only payments. Yes. Now, it's beautiful, but it's beautiful. The bank likes you to borrow the money, line of credit. <laughs> RAV likes you to borrow my money, 8 to 12%. And the MIC likes you because you're paying out whatever you just said, 8.5%. So you're paying out... But now let's look at what you've done. So let's keep making money. What are we doing now? Okay, so that deal actually with still 100% financed uh, still made me cash flow of $1,544 every single month, Rav. So hold on one more time. What did you say? I'm making like 1500 bucks every single month cash flowing at 100% financed. 1500 but this is the month, which is actually... 18k in a year you're making cash flow 18k yeah cash flow okay great that's amazing and uh and then now what now what okay so now that i've renovated those four units right i've i've renovated i've repositioned the assets so i got the income up i was able to reduce some of the expenses now i go back to the mortgage broker and say let's refinance Okay. And uh, so, uh, you know, the refinance process, process, sorry, they order the appraisal, the appraiser gets the numbers, and it came back in at $960,000 new appraisal. No. Yeah. Over what, 10 years? <laughs> I bought it in September 2020, and in Feb 
2021, uh, we were able to, to refinance. We were able to get the new appraisal. But that's four units that switched over, right? They were underperforming. Yeah, but Dave, so you're saying you took 43000 I mean, you took that money and you, you know, did some lipstick, except for the one that didn't look that great, on four units. We bought it for six hundred, and you said what? Nine what? Nine sixty. Nine hundred and sixty. So if you wanted to flip this, you made well over three three hundred thousand dollars after you pay everybody back. But you didn't flip it because you like oh. to keep it for income. Absolutely. So now you're going to teach us how to refinance. So in a property like this, because we have commercial. Generally speaking, we have to leave 20% into this. On this property, how much do we have to leave? Is it the same or is it different because there's commercial? Well, this one, they only, they only refinanced me up to 70% loan to value. 70%. So you've got to leave 30% in there. Yep. Um, I do this stuff backwards and weird, Dave. So if you have a calculator there, what's 30% of 960? 960? 960 times 30%, 288. So you have to leave, let's just say 290. So the bank wants you to leave 290 in there, but the rest you can take out. So 960 minus uh, 960 minus 290 comes up to 670. 670. So you were able, is this what you're telling me? Yep. You were able in September, February, in six, seven months, you were able to get six hundred and seventy thousand dollars in your hands. Yeah. And now you pay back um, the line of credit, 50,000. You pay back uh, RAV, whatever it was, 120,000. Um, and so, and then the bigger number there was uh, the MIC. The bigger yeah. number was the MIC. So you pay everybody back. And how much you have left over? So out of the, yeah, the 670, let's say if it was 50, I'd have 20K left over. 20K left over. So you are going to if you've never been to delhi india it's a beautiful place so you're going to delhi with your family for a month for a month wow but you're but you're making 20 grand a year you're making cash flow this property is going up in value every year these tenants are paying down your mortgage and this is the secret sauce to investormeldave.com that's awesome brad no, I love it. I love yeah. it. What, it yeah. Rav, can I, can I give you one, the, the part I love the most? Yes. So we were mortgaged at 600000 and I had to use some renovations. We're now mortgaged at six seventy two. dollars pay everyone out. But I'm no longer paying the 8.5% interest to the MIC. I'm no longer paying Rav 10 points, 12 points. I'm paying 2.3, whatever it is. So after paying everyone back, no more money in the deal. This deal actually makes me, I think, $4,300 cash flow a month now. Wow. So, so we just... went from, so we, we went from, we went from the 15 K over here, but because you paid everybody out and you're now getting a preferred rate at the bank, um, your cash flow monthly was 1500. Now, what is it? It's 4,300, which comes up to about $51,000 a year. So this is why I don't mind paying people like Rav interest, right? It's the bigger picture. Yeah, over 50K, which is the, the average Canadian salary, by the way, over 50K a year, you're making on this property, no money down. And that over 50K does not include the passive appreciation because properties go up and down upwards um, and the debt reduction, these guys paying down your mortgage. Yeah, bang on. Dave Dupuis, I didn't bring you on the show because I like bald heads. <laughs> I, uh, I, I brought you on because you are a very a smart guy. Thank you. Uh, and uh, you both, you and, uh, and Mel. So thank you so much. Time has run out. Really appreciate uh, your insight. And it's been a pleasure uh, being nurtured uh, by you and having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rav. Appreciate it. Yes. And thank you watching viewers at home. Without you, we would not have a show. Make sure you tune in next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon.